Okay. This is a real small apiary close to my house. It's really meant to hold just 24 colonies. I see mountain laurel blooming in the background, so I fully expect to see mountain laurel in these colonies too. We were just in a yard just south of here that had gotten a third deep to use as a honey super, and they, they had them anywhere from a half to two thirds full of nothing but mountain laurel. And these second story boxes also were meant to be taken off later and harvested for honey, but I'm not gonna be able to do it. So we have to change strategies. I can either I can either leave them as a double deep, which I like double deep, so that might be the way to go. Or later I can split the top off and put a couple frames of brood in it with a cell or a queen and just make a split with it. Um, this particular yard is going to stay put. It's going to overwinter here, so I'll probably just make it, leave it as a double deep instead of knocking it back to a single. They, they need a super. Yeah, they, yes. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Right. Yeah, super up for the mountain laurel. Yeah. Oh god. They're definitely jolly. No, they're doing all right. We gave them a lot of foundation to draw out. Look at it. That's full of brood. Brand new. Ay, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> um, this mountain laurel is just getting going too. It's going to go for at least 10 days. That was brand new foundation. That was brand new foundation. Oh, look at it splashing yeah. all over the place. Yeah. You want to take a taste, yeah, John? Yeah, here we go. <laughs> oh, that's a lot, too. Yeah, take a big old <laughs> swig of that stuff. <laughs> oh. Mm. Yeah, it's mm. uh, That's pretty bad. bad. Yeah, pretty bad. That's pretty bad, so. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> help me decide what to do. I don't want to put my medium supers on the these things. <laughs> well, that's a thought actually. We could put deeps on them and let them draw foundation on it. They would. I don't want to put it in my extracting I'd supers. I'd let them draw the foundation out. Okay. Obviously, yeah, we're combed nuts oh. now. We're like love some comb. Yeah, I can still taste that. Oh garbage. yeah, it's, it's not. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, pop a few lids. Let's see if they're oh, all they're like all this one. Good. Are they all like that? Boom. This one. Everyone's about looked at. Okay, so here's the culprit right here. This is a big mountain laurel. This is on my driveway up to my house. Got several of them on my own driveway, wouldn't you know? They're very beautiful when they're blooming wide open. And uh, this is what's making that nasty, nasty honey. This is a big bush here. They like it in the southern Appalachians. They like acidic soil, the same thing that rhododendrons and azaleas do. And they do wonderful here. I must have, I've got hundreds of these things uh, on my own 13 acres here at home. They like semi-shade. They will grow in the sun, but they like a dapple shade like this one. It's kind of under, this is actually under a sourwood tree and a maple tree, I guess. Mountain Laurel. Well, I walked up to this holly tree to take some pictures of the flowers and imagine my surprise when I saw that. Kind of caught me off guard. I like seeing these black snakes around. They keep other critters and types of snakes that we don't want away. Oh, yummy. A honey test. Come on, Jamie. Come on, Jamie. You're the, you're the best at this, so. Uh... Got the most refined palate of all. Okay, just dig in and get you a big old scoop of that stuff. Don't, get the don't, don't be shy. Don't get the bee. Don't get the bee. Yeah, don't eat the bee. <laughs> <laughs>
Whoa, wait a minute. Let me have the good stuff, Bob. Yeah, you're getting the good stuff. Mm. Mm. Oh, no well. What's the matter, Marilyn? It's got a wine oh, yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it tastes good and then not good. Right. Mm -hmm. First well, on a scale from one to ten, ten being the best, I put it about a one. Mm -hmm. Me too. I mean, would you all agree with that? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. I thought it was getting the good stuff. I know. I didn't too. Hey, I was like, so happy. Happy. And it keeps, it keeps, it's a gift that yes. keeps on giving. What is, what is, what, it just I gets worse and worse. Say, and worse. What's in there? I didn't know. That's, yeah. that's mountain laurel honey. <laughs> is it? You've heard about it. Yeah. Now, now you know what it tastes like. And that, that isn't even pure mountain laurel. That's mixed with blackberry. We tasted some down at another bee yard down in Habersham okay. County that was way worse. It was actually worse than this. Oh, boy. Wow. It just instant, like, oh. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I wanted you to taste so you get an idea what mountain laurel okay. tastes like. And rhododendron tastes just like it. They're in the same family, and they both taste terrible. If you get them pure, it will make you want to wash your mouth out, you know, We're really done. well. I got some coffee that I'm going <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you got to eat something to get it, the it, taste it out of you. It tasted all right, and then it just got bad. Well, complete change of plans. Left with four pallets of medium drawn comb. We're going to take it off. John's getting the forklift. We're going to load on deep frames of foundation. Got one of the better mountain laurel flows going on that I've ever seen, so we're just going to draw a deep comb on it. We can use the deep comb later to build nukes with. I know there's mountain laurel up in the hills, but we've also got a lot of black locust and uh, other things blooming down here, so I'm hoping that they're going to the good stuff and leaving the bad stuff alone, we'll see. It's a real overcast day. It's forecast to start raining in about two hours, so. Try to get through this yard and another one before rain sets in. Of course, when I open a colony like this, first thing I do is see if they got any swarm cells or not. Oh man, that's a heavy box. Surprisingly enough. I don't see, right you, up see way there. you see egg in a cup? No, there's nothing in there. That's interesting. Ooh, that is mostly honey. And at this time of year, we don't need these black feeders in here anymore, so I'm going to take that out, just get that out of there. Replace it with two frames. Okay, the big test. <laughs> ah. That's terrible. That Okay. Okay. Um, I, mean, I thought we were friends, Bob. <laughs> Whew. Like I told the girls, that's the gift that keeps on giving. That right. taste just goes on and on and on. That's truly awful. Okay, so what we're going to do in this yard is what we did at uh, McCracken's yesterday. I want every hive to have five or six, even. Um, deep foundations in the middle of the second story okay. and then when we you know get boxes of extra frames we'll just stack it on as a third story this one had a feeder in it if they all I want all the feeders out okay so we can put some of this stuff down below 
Oh. That'll last with us. That'll last till lunch, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe longer. Maybe longer. Mm. Mountain laurel and rhododendron both tend to come in when it's warm and dry and other plants aren't secreting nectar very well. And that's actually what's been going on for the last 10 days here. Uh, we've had two weeks without any rain, and in this county, that's actually a long time. And uh, the bees just, uh, they're not working the blackberries. We're getting a little tulip poplar, but not much. Um, maybe this rain that's coming today will change things. It's kind of a mixed bag. We hate to see the rain come in one respect because we don't get work done that day. And then if it doesn't rain, then, you know, it's not good for the plants. Every time I've made good crops of uh, mountain laurel or rhododendron, up in western North Carolina, rhododendron is a real problem. It, it's always been when it's warm and dry and the other plants aren't secreting nectar. I don't know if it means that the bees use rhododendron as a last resort and they go to the other stuff if it's secreting, or if when it's warm and dry it just puts out more or richer. The bees always go to whichever nectar source has the higher sugar content. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but all I know is right now out of I don't know, 42 bee yards. There's only four or five that aren't making this garbage. All of these boxes, everywhere we go, the top boxes are either mostly or entirely full and drawn out, so I'm pleased with that. Um, the other thing that's really been quite a surprise, and I'm not sure what it means yet, is that we're seeing colonies that are in this condition, double deeps, with very, very few swarm cells. Uh, maybe a yard of 40 colonies might only have one or two colonies that are trying to build swarm cells. I know the Caucasians have a reputation for swarming less, and I don't know if that's what's going on or Mother Nature is playing a little game with us. I really don't know, but there's been a shocking lack of swarm cells wherever we go. It started raining. It's kind of miserable at the moment. John, you getting stung much? John? Sure. You getting stung any? No, not too bad. A little bit though, yeah. There's yeah. Bees. They're starting to get there. Bees are changing their attitude a little bit. Still not bad considering it's been raining and what kind of day it is. All right, Seth. Started raining. Bees have changed their attitude. You getting stung any? Hey, they're a little ill. They're not, not happy to see us. Yeah. Uh, but you know, that, that's beekeeping life. Real beekeepers do it in rain. Oh yeah, we need a bumper sticker that says real be <laughs> real beekeepers do it in the rain. I like that. Yeah, we can put that on the back of our trucks. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, this is wild cherry. Blooms around this area and it's blooming quite late this year. Normally it's over by now and it's still blooming profusely. And the nectar from this is absolutely awful too. It may be worse. It tastes like Robitussin cough syrup. And uh, this yard's loading up on that and mountain laurel. So since I started the day out, I've made an executive decision. All of these colonies that were given that second deep as a potential future honey super are now gonna be double deeps going into winter. I like double deeps anyway, so we're just gonna run these things as double deeps and uh, we'll have, have a lot of deep comb for splitting and making nukes next spring, no problem. Things can change in a heartbeat in this business, and today it just changed for me. No problem. <laughs>